thank you very much for coming, for coming out in the middle of this rain and Lightning Rod Publications strikes again. <laughs> My name is Paulette Frankel. I am the author artist of Lust for Justice, 17 years. And um, Tony obviously is right back here. And I wanted to welcome you and thank you for coming tonight in, in spite of everything, no parking, rain, all the difficulties that I'm sure you've encountered. Um, we're living in perilous times, and now more than ever, we need courage in the face of fear. And one of the rare people who has never ever um, wavered from any of the political or social um, upheavals in the last 50 years is Tony Serra. This book is about the courage to stand up to the powers that be. I'm often asked, how did I, how did I meet up with Tony and why this book? Well, I met with Tony somewhat um, by dumb luck, I suppose, but not really. Um, I was <clears throat> sequestered in San Francisco while a friend was doing a three-day nursing exam. I was living in Bolinas at the time, so I needed to, to be able to do something with myself while waiting for her to finish her exam. And I went into the court, went into a courtroom. I've been an artist all my life, but I'd never done courtroom art, and it rather interested me. Uh, I luckily fell upon a, gr a really interesting and exciting trial. Most trials are so boring you can, can't stay awake, but you have to stay awake. You have to be like a, a crocodile that's just waiting, waiting, waiting in the swamp, taking in all the swamp water, waiting for some unsuspecting moment when something steps into that water and then you snap. And if you miss it, you miss it. It's gone. So I found that uh, quite electrifying, actually. And the lawyer on that case said, well, if you're looking for drama in the courtroom, Tony Sarah is your man. He is drama and the law at its best. He wears funky old clothes from the thrift and, and speaks without notes. He's incredibly perceptive, hard-hitting, dynamic, and no one can hold a candle to him. So I became quite interested, and I asked people, who's Tony Serra, where's Tony Serra? And they said, oh, you can't miss him. He's bald, and he has, a, he has gray hair. He's bald, and he wears a ponytail. And I'd look in every courtroom, and everybody was bald with gray hair. And I couldn't find anybody that was Serra. <clears throat> Finally, I found out where he was, and I placed myself there. And when he went at the break, um, when he went to the telephone, I stalked him out of the courtroom or, and into the telephone booth. And then I blocked his escape when he'd finished his call. It was about a big heroin bust in Hawaii. And uh, I introduced myself and I said, take me with you. I'm a courtroom artist and I want to be your artist. Well, Tony bent down and graciously shook my hand and sort of snorted and blew me off, and that was that. <laughs> and I just thought, boy, has he underestimated me. Well, 17 years later, here it is. <laughs> and I said to Tony, where's the book about you? Why aren't I reading about you in a book? And he went, bleh. And I said, well, let's do one. Your words, my art. And so he said, Bleh, and we, sketch, we, we scratched out a, um, an agreement on the hood of my car in the parking lot, and then I later had an, a proper agreement drawn up for $2,000 with a real a literary lawyer. And um, we were underway. And, you know, I assumed that Tony would write the book. But as it turned out, he came to my cabin in Bolinas, hauling boxes and upon boxes of um, his newspaper articles and snippets of this and that and tape recordings. There were no DVDs in those days and said, here, it's your baby. I don't have time. And I thought, oh, my God, I felt like I'd just been crushed under an avalanche. 
So it took me a really long time to put it all together and to get to know him. I needed to know him. I didn't want to just window shop his story. I wanted it to give the reader a sense of who this man really is as a person. So, oh, and then um, in 19, or in 2005, uh, Tony was sentenced to 10 months at Lompoc um, prison camp for his issues with taxes, which have been going on for a long time. And that's, um, the, the, here's a little snippet of that chapter. All rise. The command of the bailiff's voice hushed the anxious murmurs in the courtroom at the same time as a room full of people rose to their feet all at once. They'd gathered to witness, lend support, or report upon the sentencing hearing of J. Tony Sarah for will your fi willful failure to file income taxes for 40 years. <laughs> We all wish we had that kind of courage. <laughs> Lady Justice, atop her stone pedestal in front of the courthouse, seemed to cock an ear towards these proceedings. She was well acquainted with Tony Serra, with his unpredictable and over-the-top theatrics, so effective with ju juries and such a reprieve from the tiresome and wherefores, therefores of legalese of hot air from dry mouths blowing smoke for personal gain. In the same way that he represented only one side of her scales, Sarah was a one of a kind, with a lust for justice that trumped the lust for profit and prestige. Lady Justice, <coughs> half naked and blindfolded, smiled a knowing smile and tilted her scales of stone. Tony was given his sentence of 10 months, and um, Judge Sparrow lauded him and said that he, it wasn't because of greed that he didn't pay, but nonetheless, the law was the law and no one was above it. There were gasps and tears among the crowds of spectators, but Sarah himself shook off the dark specter of a withering fate, uttered a sigh of relief, and welcomed this relatively short sentence as a temporary vacation from his grueling calendar in the trenches of jury trials. I can do ten months standing on my head, he cheerfully proclaimed. The media, media crowded around Sarah for a moment about, for an, a comment about his notion of living with criminals for ten months. These are my people, he said. I have more, pre I have more friends in prison than out. <laughs> I've given my life to defending their causes. I love them and they love me. Lust for justice, everybody. Thank you.